What does it take to change the world? It takes a long chain of resilient men and women, endowed with various skill sets and divergent mindsets, holistically working together to achieve a common goal. It is a synergetic effect of different art forms combining into one to think, design, and create mind-blowing stories. A systematic workflow and processes from department to another. A set of professional tools and elements designed to create and fine-tune. It takes persistence, consistency, and collaboration to tell compelling stories, to evoke emotions, and to change the world. We have designed a one-stopover center online with all the seasoned creatives from all the realms of the film industry. Together, we can. We are the Film Hackers. Good afternoon, wherever you're watching from. Welcome to yet another conversation uh, of Film Hackers. Uh, but first things first, you know what uh, the stand is as far as COVID-19 is. And I just want to appeal to you, if you're watching us, uh, to do the following. First, wear your mask, okay? Uh, get your mask on, wear it right. And we've been told that uh, it doesn't reach above the... Uh, uh, mustache, no, 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 or the just below the nose, you wear it fully, okay? Number two, please make sure you maintain social distance when you're in crowds. Number three, if you are not going anywhere, just stay home. And if you can't go get uh, a COVID-19 test, those tests are available at uh, Naguru, Kira, uh, Kiswa Health Centers, and uh, start to isolate yourself in case you have any of those symptoms. Of course, this season is also confusing. The paranoia is crazy. You guys, me, I feel like I have COVID, first of all. <laughs> How are you guys? The paranoia is crazy. You get one little thing, I'm always checking my temperature. Is it happening to you? You guys, you are lying. <laughs> the paranoia is crazy. So if you feel you, you if you feel any of the symptoms, please go and test uh, or call the Ministry of Health. All right. Uh, obviously, you know the industry is on a standstill uh, since COVID broke down. The Chinese industry alone, the Chinese film industry, has lost more than a hundred billion dollars. Not a million, billion dollars. So uh, having these conversations for us is not just, uh, uh, you know, something we're trying to do while we wait. No, we're trying to see how to improve ourselves uh, during this time and make the best out of it. Joining me is an experienced panel today. We're talking how to use online media to build your brand or even uh, your business as a filmmaker, as a content uh, maker. Joining me from my extreme left, Dan. Welcome. <laughs> First, uh, yes, now you can remove because the president uh, uh, said if you are going to talk for long, you remove. It's allowed. <laughs> yes. yes, he's also with the uh, Next Media Services. How is the new hill? <laughs> nice. Next to uh, Danze is also a content creator who uh, appeared on TV. Now she has her own channel. Yes. That's true. I think she was like, this 50k couch I can't manage. <laughs> <laughs> the shade. The no shade. shade. The shade. The shade. The <laughs> shade. She was like, this 50k makeup of that. Uh, nah. Nah. <laughs> no, I don't wear makeup, but um, it, it has nothing to do with that. I guess. Once you've outgrown something, you've outgrown it. It's mm. time for you to go out there and just venture and find out what else you want to do, what else you're capable of doing, because, I mean, it doesn't help if you stay in a confined box. Mm -hmm. So it's... There's it's, no box. Mm, there's no box. I mean, I'm a free spirit. I'm a free mind. I like to be free, yeah. so... Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Cover he goes by the name <laughs> of Mr. Hashtag. 
And uh, we are glad that he found the Mrs. Hashtag. <laughs> Paul, welcome to the show. <laughs> the what? And the junior. And the hashtag the junior. Yeah. Uh, the junior is already there. The junior. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Paul, to the show. Thank you. Um, next to Paul is a man who uh, most of us have gone to beg for work, uh, but he is, for lack of better, the mind of the client. You work with so many uh, clients. He's a creative director at Scanet. Alan, welcome to the show. I'll take that. Usually it's a guy with beard and it stops there. So, thank you. So this is a good <laughs> one. Thank you, Volondo. Yeah. He's a good one. And Nothing, he yeah. is known to fix everything from light, sound, graphics. You actually fixed an entire station. Josh the fixer. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah. Yes. Nice, and uh, the latest one you fixed looks very nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank Josh, you. welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Uh, you can talk to us on our pages. Uh, we have Net Studios Africa, and by the way, Net Studios Africa is a brand new space where you can create your content, you can film ads, you can edit, uh, you can. Uh, uh, record audio, check it out in Chitintale, and uh, they are the ones who are hosting us this afternoon. Thank you, guys. Also, incredible media who are, for lack of a better word, the owners of a Film Hackers, Shafiq and the entire team, Eddie. Thank you, guys. And also Garage Group uh, are the ones who are partnering uh, with us this morning. So go to all those pages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and join the conversation. You can hashtag film hackers. Uh, I, I want to know, um, l let me start with, with Tracy. Uh, what has been your experience shifting from mainstream TV to, you know, having a channel where you, you, <laughs> you, you have to push the content on your own? Yeah. Um, it's difficult. Every time you decide to become a self-employed person, I think it comes with a lot of difficulties because you don't have another source of income where you're going to actually get this money. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you have people who believe in the dream that you have, which is a very lucky thing for me because I was very well connected. I've had a couple of friends come on board and they say, oh, I'll do this for free and nice. um, I'll do your camera work, I'll do your sound. I'll make sure maybe I get us a Zoom H6 so we can get better sound with time. Um, but it's difficult because you don't have, let's say, um, on TV, they'll run a few promos for you, or oh, these guys are going to have maybe uh, a Friday show and it's going to be like this. That's not the same thing with um, YouTube channels. And the industry is still very virgin in Uganda. I would encourage a lot of young people to dive into it. You don't have to wait to be hired by NBS or NTV. You can just go ahead and do whatever you have to do because the space is free for you to create and you have the ability to push exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. You know what your consumers want. Mm -hmm. It's not like being in mainstream media where you're told, um, Brian, we want you to talk about this today. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It's, it's your own content creation. You come up with your own scripts. Mm -hmm. You make sure you come up with the right people to talk about the right subjects that mm -hmm. you want. So you push it and not only do you push it, your friends push it for you because it's a community. Mm -hmm. If I'm pushing something that Alan is interested in, that you are interested in, you're going to just endorse it. I'm not even going to pay you for it. Yeah. You're just going to go ahead and do it. Yeah. So it's been difficult, but it's a very good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Quite an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Danza, you, 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 you have one of the most vibrant um, uh, pages, for lack of a better word, uh, as far as content is concerned, you know, Next uh, really pushes uh, all out. Uh, what has been the traction like uh, in, as far as consumption of online media is concerned? Um, well, how can I say it? You know, there's no actual accurate answer to that question in terms of the traction. Mm. But um, I believe since we got locked down, at least from March, yeah. March to about... I think the window was about four months. There was over 70% increase in the number of people that are actually viewing content. Before people were just on social media commenting and doing all those things. Remember the famous battles that used to happen on social media every night. Hmm. Now that all translated to people actually watching stuff. Hmm. So video content grew by above 70%. Um, hmm. At least locally here in Uganda. Worldwide it was even more uh, ridiculous. Uh, and the funny thing is the kids 
content was the most consumed stuff during this period of time. I don't know whether it's bad parenting from our end, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's a channel. There's a channel called PewDiePie on YouTube. He's the most subscribed to uh, YouTuber on earth. But then the channel with the most views this year has been Coco Melon with over 200 views a day. 200 million? Hmm? Yeah, fine. He's, he's 200 fan. million a day. Wow. And this is a US channel. So you can imagine the the revenues this channel has been racking in. Yeah. So uh, the numbers are, for a lack of a better word, insane. Uh, for local content creators, uh, myself, my, myself I, I jumped back into doing YouTube and ETC. Mm -hmm. I've seen people becoming more creative and uh, the feedback has been real time, meaning that uh, by all means, uh, people who have given it a shot right now have managed to create audiences, like she has said, like I, I told Shafiq last time I was here, why do you want your content to be on TV? This is the biggest question I always ask people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Joshua teaching people how to do video in business, because uh, also that's a big question, monetizing the content. But uh, from your end, what have you seen as far as online media consumption is concerned? As far as online media uh, content is concerned, is, uh, uh, I think not even I think, I think I've seen it. Danza said it, like uh, from the time the lockdown happened, there was a very high spike in content consumption, uh, majorly in video, you know? So I was also running my own thing, video and business, uh, teaching people how to use video uh, in their businesses. Yes. Uh, well, big businesses know how to do this, but there's a, there's a big, gap between the big and the SME. Yeah, those ones. Uh, I've seen them embrace online in, in, the, in these uh, four months. You know, they've actually understood that, you know what, if you want to get customers, you have to show that you're present, that you're available. And the only quick way is through here. Yeah. So there's been a spike. It's amazing. Well, it's through a sickness or a disease, but <laughs> it's just it's just amazing. Right. Yeah. Alan, you handle some some really big accounts. Um, uh, talk to us about what those brands do to leverage online. So I think online is you know it's 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 a broad um, field. So you know you have the social media element and you have the the digital marketing element, and then you have the, the media element of, um, of online as well. So I think what changed a lot, and it's been, um, I'd say about like the last six years mm -hmm. has been interesting in that uh, big brands sort of had, you know, social as the, you know, the, the accompaniment to the main, um, you know, the main meal. To the side side. Uh, absolutely. Um, and... I think overnight, uh, what COVID did was turn that on its head and um, help big brands just reconsider their priorities. Um, and, you know, there's just three elements to the content. Uh, and more and more brands are investing in quality content. Um, number two, the partnerships. Brands are realizing the importance of, uh, you know, people like Tracy, who can now live, who can amplify uh, the voice of their brand. And um, finally, it's, it's almost what Danze said about um, online as a media channel. So instead of uh, pumping their money into traditional methods like TV, uh, more and more brands are actually increasing their digital media spend. So that's why you'll see ads following you online, whenever you want to watch video, you know, uh, YouTube videos, so on and so forth. Um, so those have been the three elements, I would say, uh, have changed. Right. Yeah. You know, you talked about leveraging, and I, I thought about Paul. Yesterday, I saw you, uh, I saw your post about uh, Skyview and embracing the family thing together. Um, and there's more and more of that online these days. Um, what is your experience as far as creating this content so you can attract also the, the right brand uh, that you can endorse for? Uh, well, um as usual, content is about uh, putting in maturity so that you create believability of the uh, audience that you're trying to target. Mm. So the content creators like the dances and, and a few of us would, would understand in this way that we have gotten a certain market of, uh, of young people okay. whose uh, motives are more of having fun on the platforms. But then we also look at 
targeting a certain audience that will have, that will buy, that we, we need CTAs, calls to action. So the current um, COVID caused influx of, of young people falling into the platforms and the sites, I think is more of like, we are trying to train them how to create content that is um, consumable by elders and um, people who are understanding. Mm -hmm. So when you talk of, um, let's say, sky view, I have to show somebody who is young out there that you don't need to just talk about this product, but be a first customer of the product. So I show them that me and my family consume Skyview, and then they will believe that, yes, that is a product I might also need to consume. Mm -hmm. So that is how brands also look for people mm -hmm. who influence for them. You must have, you must be the first client to, the, to, the, to that client, mm -hmm. client's product. So you can't talk about, I saw a certain brand, liquor brand that was hiring people who influence for funnel, I was like, so why, why contradict people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? exactly. why, why don't you look for a person who drinks liquor? I drink liquor, I'm proud of that. So why don't you hire me? Is it because uh, my stake is a bit higher? Right. So I really felt bad because people didn't actually consume the, the product. Because you should, tell me, you, should, you, should, you should tell me about the product with experience. Yes. You've experienced that. So mm. I really bash such uh, brands which don't know how to select influencers. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Chase, Chase. Authenticity. To actually add to what he said, mm. I think it's so often that when we dive into influencing, it's, um, we're, we're just thinking to ourselves, um, this is about me. It's mm -hmm. never about you. Mm -hmm. It's about the audience that you're trying to pull. I don't even like to just say audience because that's, that becomes like your family. Mm -hmm. sure. Because I need to know that, he, like he said, he takes alcohol. So mm -hmm. if a brand that uh, uh, is asking him to endorse alcohol mm -hmm. called him, I would trust his word for it. Sure. I'd say, oh, this guy is the party king or he, he brings it on, he loves his liquor. So he should be very selective with what he's taking. So we need to think about it in the, in the sense that you think about your consumer. Where is your consumer coming from? You understand? Uh, what are the age groups that you're trying to target? Because, I mean, so many brands have different things going on, but they know what their crowd wants. Other than that, we would be seeing, let's say, Coca-Cola says its niche is Coca-Cola. That's what they front to us. And what's the biggest product that's selling from Coca-Cola? It's Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. We don't see them fronting the crest and ETC, ETC. Yeah. So you have to have a niche. You don't just go, so he's saying Fanero and then you're influencing for liquor. Mm -hmm. What do you stand for? Like, I need to know, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Right. Um, we're going to talk more about that. What do you have to do to get the audience that you're looking for? Uh, if also mainstream TV is a, a challenge for you, uh, what can you do about the different platforms? What content can you drop? What are the tools that you can use to attract those audiences? That and more when we come back. can join the conversation using the hashtag film hackers this morning we're talking how to use online media to uh build your brand if you are a content creator what are you putting out there you can also share it with us uh, so the rest of the world can see it these conversations are every friday on uh, industry and if this is your first time we've so far talked about uh, the laws from ucc that was a heated debate on the show and we also uh, talked about how to actually monetize some of your content. And uh, this morning, my panel of experts who are into the digital world, the online world, uh, telling us what you can do uh, to make sure that your content is viewed. Um, YouTube has just announced that they've uh, put down more than 11, they put down more than 11 million videos actually every day because people are also posting the wrong content. 
So uh, you can tell us what you're up to and we, we'll critique, we'll be nice, don't <laughs> worry, before someone takes yeah. it down. Uh, I have Josh with me, he's Josh the Fixer. Uh, if you've watched video in business, uh, some of you who need to start doing that for your own companies, uh, you can check it out. Alan from Scanad is the creative director, and uh, he's the guy who thinks about all those concepts. You can call him the beard man. <laughs> Always, Mr. <laughs> Hashtag. Uh, he's uh, a very uh, popular influencer online, and uh, you can check out uh, his page. He's also, are you also on Facebook or strictly Twitter? That's where you... Yeah, I'm all around 360. I, I think I have every... It's the same an name. on every social media platform. It's the same yeah, handle. The same name or Mr. Mr. Hashtag. Hashtag. Yeah. All right, you can check them out on uh, uh, Twitter. Also, uh, YouTuber. Is that what we can call you now? Or Media just personality. Content? Media personality. All right. Yeah. Tracy uh, Kababito also joins us this morning. And uh, Edwin Danze, who is a digital specialist and is also with Next Media Services. And joining us, John. Uh, Senkez, who is a digital marketing specialist. Uh, John, welcome. Thank you. You, you. you handled the biggest, uh, one of, uh, the big telecom, right? And you, 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 you looked at content all the time that went out, and how you, you, you took it out. From where you sit, what do you think uh, content creators need to watch out for when creating even some of this content before it's it's published. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think critically is the originality of the content, uh, especially on the corporate space. We've seen a number of copycats, so to speak, either mm. in concept or some blatant mm. cut and paste concepts that mm. are dished out. So I think uh, a content creator needs to be original. Uh, the corporate companies rarely, uh, unless they have particular products or services that they are pushing or a thematic campaign, rarely do they focus on content creation because then their core business, unless it's a content company, is not content creation, it's yes. whatever they do. Yes. So a content creator has a lot of room and flexibility to come in proactively and create an original concept that will sit well with the audience and the brand of whatever company they are looking out for. And then this concept can be taken on. I've seen this happen a lot where you don't wait for a pitch, you don't wait for requests to, to, to submit concepts and all. You come up with a concept, you pitch it to, to the company, and then they sell. Uh, many telecoms and other companies are getting into the content distribution arena. Mm -hmm. There is a huge demand, for example, if I could talk about uh, uh, the telecoms you have, MTN, Airtel, uh, for people to create content because mm. they have platforms like apps, like uh, portals that need content, uh, mm. local content. But uh, you find that at the moment, a lot of foreign content is, is, is very visible. Uh, local content is not, largely because also there is that aspect of ownership. So on one hand, uh, the guy could be the camera person or the producer or an actor, actress, but they do not have rights to this content. Mm -hmm. So ownership <clears throat> of the content then becomes very critical mm -hmm. for the content creator. But if you are looking at someone going solo uh, on the content creation front, I think it's going to be all about uh, keeping a pulse on, on what is happening on ground mm -hmm. and creating content that is relevant to a circumstance. And then also, it's not good to be all over the place. You need to establish uh, a niche for yourself and then build on that niche. Uh, you can be a good you know, person in tech, in, in film, in this, but if you're all over the place, then it means you're nowhere. So mm -hmm. people need to know you for something in the industry and, and that is very critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More like the jack of all trades and nothing, uh, and, and a master at none. Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. You've been teaching people um, how to start making content for their companies. What are some of those mistakes you've, you've seen that also informed your decision to start such, something like that? Uh, for me, when I started, it was strictly uh, educational. When you want customers, first have to educate them about what 
you are going to, to give them. Mm. And that, in that way, you highlight uh, the problems. So they view your product as a solution. That is one. Mm. But um, also, uh, my target audience or my target customers are usually SMEs. Uh, their biggest um, problem is forgetting that if you need customers, you need to show them that you exist. And right now, the biggest uh, platform is online. Mm -hmm. You need to show them that you exist online. <coughs> so how you do it has always been the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I've always told them that you have to be very entertaining. Um, it's, it's usually three E's. Entertain, educate, and then execute. And always remember, I tell them that, always remember that boring will chase you out of business. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're selling, for example, floor tiles, you have to find a way of talking about those tiles in an entertaining way, you know, to your target audience. Because the space you're operating in has a lot of content and low attention span. So you have to have, in screenwriting, we call it page one. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. page one has to be bang, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. Your first 30 seconds of your content have to be attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is what I tell entrepreneurs all the time mm -hmm. in video and business. Screen one. Your page one has to be amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah? You have to have a hook. You have to have the hook. Um, what do you think, you know, you talk about entertainment and I find people who are laboring to be funny. I just watched uh, another <laughs> Ugandan content maker last night and I, I even commented in, in one of the groups, I mean, I told them, wow, being funny is not easy. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but, but you, another thing is you don't have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if dance is entertaining and you're a floor tile seller, work with Danzi. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tell him to come up with content that will be entertaining, educational, and will execute your business in, in a creative way. Mm -hmm. Don't do it alone, you know, because when you try, I think those are the guys now you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They labor to be funny. They really, really try so Bambi, hard. He, and was, he, he, he was doing his thing. <laughs> 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 so uh, you, you, you bring up the conversation of collaboration, yes. you know. Um, Alan, talk to us about that. Um, and even you where you are, as kind of some of the, uh, uh, the <clears throat> things you do to collaborate with people uh, to execute, uh, you know, delivery of, of content. Uh, so so what, I, what I'm actually really excited about is there's, there's many types of collaboration. So what, what online has made possible is that you'll, it's not only collaboration between brands and content makers, but sometimes you can have um, collaborations between, say, two content makers, mm -hmm. and that leads to some, you know, a new interesting space. Yeah? Or you can have um, collaboration in terms of, I mean, this show in itself is a collaboration, mm -hmm. yeah? which is pretty wonderful. So it always leads to the, the number of uh, spin-offs and iterations just multiply. So I think whereby before ownership was very, um, uh, the internet has dem democratized is a good, good word to use. Yeah. Yeah? Um, so yeah, I think brands are always open to collaboration uh, because they want to focus on what they do. I think the hard bit is, um, and collaboration makes execution easier, you know, because there's things that uh, whether you're an individual or a company, you're pretty good at, and you'll find that this person can either open up a new audience or bring a new dimension to um, whatever you're doing. For example, uh, Josh, you know, if you bring video and we have certain clients who don't necessarily have the, the big budgets um, to execute your traditional type of productions, uh, we're always happy to open up to new suppliers who can now help us execute um, with smaller companies. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a seat at the table, mm -hmm. is, is what I like to see. Everyone has a seat at the table, and that is usually uh, made impossible by the, the things that are uh, at our exposure. Tracy, what, let's start a conversation on 
tools to use, you know. You are lucky you, you said you have friends who have, you know, this equipment when you talk about the Zooms. Yeah. That's good equipment. Mm. Uh, but what are some of the tools that uh, people can use to create online content? Um, like he said much earlier, the first thing you have to think about is what am I bringing to the table that hasn't been brought onto the table? It's going to be very vague of me to do a replica of this show. Do you understand? Someone needs to see something new about this. For example, when we created Strongest Voices, we were thinking young people haven't been given a platform to speak about the things they want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, there are things that are taboo for you to speak about in the community. You cannot talk about things like sex or stuff like that, mm. you know, because mainstream media, I don't think, just accommodates for that. So when we looked at the space, there wasn't a show where people were able to express themselves, talk about things like toxic parenting, talk about things like mental health, those are topics that are not welcome. Mm -hmm. So you think about your unique factor. What are you selling? What are you about? And then it's okay to keep changing it because the, the idea is to see what works and what doesn't work. When it comes to Instagram, I think we're skipping the most important thing. If I come to your profile and it's not captivating for me, because I will see Brian Molondo and then I'll say, okay, what is he about? Who's he? Public figure. You feel me? <laughs> in it. Exactly. So if, if your profile is filled out the right way, and I'm not saying go say I'm a digital marketer, I'm a social media analyst, I'm, don't say anything you're not. The problem mm -hmm. with people is we overestimate what we can do <laughs> as opposed to what we can actually do in actual life. So speak of the things that you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Fill out your profile the right way. I don't want to come to your profile if you say, uh, bad boss, mm, you know, bad boss girl, you know, I don't want to say the word because I don't want to cast, but, you know, um, girl making moves, no, 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 no. You are not making moves. <laughs> You're not making moves. <laughs> Let's be moves. honest with ourselves. And then um, for Instagram, Twitter, hashtags are ma major key. Keywords as well that you use when you're selling your brand are very important. You have to have the right hashtags. You have, to have, you have to look at your insights, actually. There are people who have gone the extra mile of promoting their businesses, you know, using, uh, you know, the sponsored pages. So the beauty with sponsored pages is you can see how many people followed you, how many people maybe went to the next story, how many people exited. Then you'll know, like, okay, maybe that wasn't very interesting because if 100 people went out, what's wrong? What am I not doing right? Mm -hmm. You have to think about all those possibilities mm -hmm. so you can keep track of your impressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah, Just maybe to add, um, we've seen, I'm sure you guys have noticed this, mm. uh, the quality of Ugandan content online is lacking, mm. you know, because people have always taken it for a joke. Mm. Uh, when I used to work uh, where you're working now mm. in Skynet, we had something called YouTube quality. Which is usually used to mean low, mm -hmm. low quality, wow. low budget. Low. As in, right now, Dude. that bar has been raised yeah, right. way high. You yes. know, you can shoot 4K. You know, you can light well. This show is being filmed in a very big studio. Look at the lighting. Mm -hmm. Where is it ending up? Not on YouTube. TV. Yeah. On YouTube. It's going on YouTube. So, yeah. quality is an issue that maybe we need another conversation that, to... That's another conversation. Yes. Yeah. Because we, other industries are asking for also specifications we don't, we have not yet met, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's So we, true. we shall have another conversation mm -hmm. on that. She, talk, she talks about insights. Just uh, talk more about that and how me, who is seated in my sitting room right now, how I can, you know, understand and use them to, uh, with, with I'm boosting my content, or hit the stage mm. when I know what I'm going for. Okay, um, let me jump on what you said earlier, mm. and then Josh's, then I get to that. Okay. I think when you asked about the tools, like, um, like you mentioned, we've talked about telecoms, uh, you've talked about agencies, you've talked about SMEs and ETC, and the most important thing is always, your number one tool is you, your second most trusted tool is this guy right here. Yes. Because if you can't afford to do what uh, Net Studios Africa is doing right now, but you're a funny guy and you have the strategy that, jo that uh, John has, mm. you're not going to fail to deliver a message. It may not be 4K or anything like that, or in 1080, whatever it is, but 
Sometimes we are, as consumers of content, we are willing to ignore that your video is not in the highest yeah. quality, but it's so captivating, or well, the story that you're telling is amazing enough for me to actually continue watching. Getting past the first one minute in your video is difficult because people have way too many other options. Yeah. I mean, I go on YouTube to watch KSI, PewDiePie and all these other guys, but if I see in my thumbnail, let's say, a travel vlog from Faye or any other person out there with the right thumbnail, and I watch it, it's a, it's a fun video, but she's, she's, she's with good people and it's funny and all those things, I'll continue. Second tool you're going to use is, of course, like you've just said, the other content creators around you that are collaborating. Mm. I find it extremely hard for, for myself to post a video on Twitter and it gets very good traction. Vis-a-vis, -vis, if a maker posted a video on Twitter, it's going to get the traction, you get it? So meaning, why don't I have him in my video? He posts it on his channel and I share it on my channel. So it's, it, those are kind of things that you need to think about. And then about the insights, the most important insight for yourself is knowing that, uh, like you've just said, being honest with myself, if, if I believe I'm the kind of content creator who wants to do YouTube for money, the most important things you're going to put in consideration, what's your CPM like? Which region are you in? What do they like to watch? What is your niche? You get things like that. Consider those things first you're going to find out that you're not going to be a travel vlogger, you're not going to be a social media expert online, but probably you're going to be a cake maker or a makeup artist, you get it? Eh? Because you've accepted that simple fact that that's it. Other things that are very important, reach. Engagement is the most important thing right now, especially for video, because you're interacting directly. I find it very hard for, okay, most YouTubers, almost content creators find it hard to shoot, edit, push out. You see what these guys have done right now is we are live. They've gone past the whole stage of I have to sit back and edit this video and then upload it, put in the captions, tags, and everything else. The way they've prepared it with the right hashtag and then the community that is surrounding them right now. Because I, I, do, I do a lot of monitoring. I'm obsessed with numbers. Facebook is working for them right now right. very well. And then some YouTube videos that are going to be posted for film hackers will work based on who is on that panel. So once you understand these insights, it's going to help you sell your brand. I've seen, I've seen uh, what's, what's Safe Border. Safe Border took off like this, you get it? Eh? Yeah. Yet we had Uber, very big company out there. Mm -hmm. But when they came here, they wanted to give us the Uber feel. Mm -hmm. The influencers they had were the Salvadors and what? Big fish, you mm -hmm. get it? Eh? Mm -hmm. But Uber had this dude who is on Twitter who has crazy number of followers on Twitter who said he's the first Safe Border guy mm, mm, mm. and because i can relate to that dude because i know border borders are, are working <laughs> even the, <laughs> that's not the exactly <laughs> even the even the guy the, the guy who says in munyonyo kololo etc will use a border because he's seen them but the beautiful thing they've done is they've given me a helmet mm. so okay. they're selling safety nothing to do with transport it's just safety yes yeah. mm. so those are a couple of things you need to think about so uh, Danzi, if mm. i can ask um do, do you sometimes see people mismatching their type of content to different mediums so you know, some people will try to push the content on Instagram, you know, to thrive on YouTube. Mm. True. Or people trying to, you know, push visual content on Twitter and it's going to work on Instagram. And how would you, how can people learn to, to be better? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, look at, let me use John's example. There's Airtel and there's MTN. They're telecos, but there's a huge distinction between the two of them. Mm. One comes off seemingly very corporate, the other is just cool. You get it? Mm -hmm. Because MTN understood that if some stuff is happening right now, jump on that trend. You get it? Yeah. Because they were struggling to outdo Be gentle. Brand. You know my well, alliance is... Uh, I get it. I get it. That's what I'm Let me use this example. So, so, so the Airtel, Airtel was with the right properties. Sports, well, you're gonna cringe and everything else, you get it. But then MTN was like, you know what, I can't beat them there. Mm -hmm. Let me beat them in conversation. Mm -hmm. you get it? So, those are the things. When we get to platforms, I'll use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, Web, Web has also said it's everywhere. But remember what he says niche. Mm -hmm. I will have an Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all those things. But if I'm posting a vlog on Twitter, I'm mad. Yeah. Yes. Get it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. if I go to YouTube and I put a vlog, Again, about myself, I'm still mad. But if I had my vlog with my friends who are more interesting than me, if I had Bill there, I produced a show with Marcus and Gaetano, if they are in there, people are going to watch that vlog because I accepted the fact that 
I can create it, they'll give me the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing about uh, platforms is most people assume that when they think about video, they think YouTube, Instagram. Mm. Unfortunately, within the years that are coming, it's going to be one. It's going to be the number one platform first for video. They are slowly giving you 30, one minute, four minutes. They're going to let you stream an entire, you saw Snoop Dogg and DMX do a whole four hours show, just beatbox together. Mm. So end of the day, find out, find out about that platform first. Is your content? No, is your target audience on that platform? Mm -hmm. Then is your content suitable for that platform? The rest of the other stuff, you can pay for it to make it happen. Otherwise, most times it, it just won't work. And then again, for the brands, for agencies, design for platforms. Don't get the TVC, remove video, and the audio goes on radio. It's very distracting mm -hmm. and weird. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yeah, it's cost cut. <laughs> it, it is, it really is now. Yeah. Yeah, just, just, yes. just to add to uh, the, the insights uh, when you're creating content, I compare uh, content creation to, to a three course meal. Mm -hmm. You must have a starter, there is the main course, and then there is dessert. Now, uh, people do not listen, just like guys are obsessed with, with data, can dig and dig. People do not listen to the data and what it tells them about a very critical metric when, when you're doing especially video, and that is your retention. Uh, if you go to all these platforms, Facebook, YouTube, etc., you can scroll second by second and you are shown the progression of when the audience was uh, streaming, when they dropped off, and that then informs if it's an edited piece, when you where you put what cut, yeah. if it's a live feed, uh, a live feed, it then influences when you say what, so that the message is not lost. You know, you, you can bring the message on the uh, 20th minute and your retention is five minutes. So you then know where to place what content yeah. and then drive value uh, for, for that. So it's, I think it's critical for one to listen. Then but there is the, going back to the three course meal, there are people who are going to consume bite-sized pieces and this make the bulk of, of online people. So they don't want long stuff, it bores them. Yeah. So you have to create content that is bite-sized, that is, you know, uh, in like a minute or two, I'm done and you've delivered your message. There are those who will go in for uh, long form content. Yes. This usually falls under the video on demand category, um, you know, Netflix, and even if we're looking at uh, such a show. But the problem with long form, it either has to be so entertaining mm. that it mm -hmm. can hold me hold alternatively me. Yeah. it has to be about a topic that i'm passionate about yeah. there are people who will not view this to the end then mm. there is a guy who was here from zero seconds <laughs> and he's still seated up to the end yeah. so yeah. you then need to know what what is your type of content do you take it bite size because you can do something that has episodes instead of having one okay. long okay. hour thing mm. that you know will lose people alternatively if it's long form where do you put what message because even long form has a retention lifespan. Then for the desserts, it's basically you uh, repurposing your content. If you do a show and you put it out there, there are some book pointers, uh, what we call teasers in, in campaign, promos and what that you can pick. So for example, this conversation, Danzi is talking about insights. Pick his clip when he's talking about insight, distribute it. It's going to regenerate you know, more, more views to your content. So we often focus on uh, what uh, my background is media, we, we don't have the next day reporting kind of thing in content. Mm. So you publish your content, it's a live feed, it's gone, that's the end of it. Until well, you, until you go one. another one. Yet in between these sessions, you can do, using the same content you recorded, actually serve your audience and even draw them to specific sections of the long form piece that you want them to pick interest in. So that then becomes very critical as well. This is good stuff, Tracy. You look like you are. <laughs> Just to talk about what he was saying, uh, long form content and um, you know the shorter videos. What I've found with people is, for example, how you started this show is very important. You started it with banter. Someone is going to stay because one, they know you're funny and maybe the people that you've collaborated with today. But then um, it's also very important, no matter how good your short video is, he talked about the tool that you use, like a phone, all you need is a phone. It's not just any phone. 
The truth is, whether we want to accept it or not, people are not going to sit there and listen to something with bad sound or watch a video that's very sketchy, unless I have like a deep loyalty for you. Yeah. People love beautiful visuals. Why do you watch the things that you watch? Why do you go to the restaurants that you go to? Look at all the bigger brands and understand why people choose those brands as opposed to their competitors. You have to be unique, especially in, um, I like going to people's Instagram pages who have like a monotonous color. For some reason, that will just pull me, like there's an aesthetic to it. Uh, when you look at Nagio's Instagram page, Nagio has one of the most, consistency is also a very big key when it comes to social media. You have to be consistent with it. They have a page where they just put up pictures by different photographers, Nagio photographers. So if you check out their page, there's a color that they use. It's very monotonous, yes. but it's very appealing for you to look at. And then the captions are always very lengthy. They always give gratitude, which is also a tool that you need to use. You need to make people feel like they're appreciated. People relate to other people. So if I'm not relating with Brian, if I, if I comment on Brian's picture four weeks straight, oh, Brian, you look amazing. It doesn't hurt to say, oh, yo, man, thank you, bro. Thank you. That's really nice. Always be grateful That's for the people. <laughs> no, always be grateful Good. for the favorites, for the likes, um, for the people who are endorsing your stuff. It makes people feel important when you show them that you recognize they're there, as opposed to someone who just comes, okay, whatever. And then you have to connect to your local community. I wouldn't um, go for the bigger celebrities because that's what everyone usually wants. I want Brian to endorse Uber. I want him to do this. You can start with the local people, you know, mm. someone that people can relate to, mm. like he said. Mm -hmm. So a border guy, and I'm just like, oh, this is my cue. This is my okay. guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, FYI, Uber, you can come. <laughs> <laughs> of quality. Mm. Aesthetically, yes, we need uh, good visuals that are colorful, but everything starts with strategy, mm. you know? And strategy will help you determine the story, the depth, you know? Uh, one of the biggest clips to ever make it in the news world was um, in 2011, when Gaddafi was being killed. It was a GSM phone, you know, like a very bad quality phone, but you, the story was very deep. It was Gaddafi. Mm. It was his last days. Mm. CNN ran with that, AFP ran with that, or BBC, all of them, one clip. But the quality was very poor. But because it was that guy, you know, so start with everything, anything you have, but work on the depth of your content, yes. as in work on the depth. Like, let it have a certain kind of feel, mm -hmm. okay, that I can gravitate to even when you're in the dark, mm -hmm. you know? So don't be hesitant to use a phone. Mm -hmm. Work on the depth mm -hmm. of your content. Right. Let it have a story that and is very are, captivating. there are great phones right now. Um, yeah. Alan. I think that's such a major key for whether you're using, you build your brand as a business, as a content creator, as um, a creative. Um, so, you know, just told within a story, there's a, there's a legendary Ugandan called Derek something, and he had a business card that said, I do everything. <laughs> this guy, and I was like, I like this guy, but is that the best strategy? And strategy is a word that kind of intimidates um, individuals. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you must be a corporate and strategy. And I think it's a simple, um, you know, roadmap, just knowing what will work best mm -hmm. and the most efficient way to reach your end goal. Mm -hmm. So years later, what he actually did is um, he shifted online. So, you know, once again, the phone, and now he's on Facebook and he sells furniture. So number one, he's focused. <laughs> and number two, he knows that when people want to buy furniture, first of all, they want to see how it looks, the <laughs> shape, the color. So I think he did that subconsciously and it's gotten to him and, and you can look him up and he actually has a significant following engagement and his strategy worked for him, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's, I think, at the heart of it, the beauty of building your brand online. Um, mm -hmm. And to take that a step, uh, you know, for creatives and content creators, I think for creatives, it's very interesting because um, it's easy to get, it's easy to punch above your weight. So you may come out of design school, and even if you don't have, uh, you know, you haven't had formal training or you haven't had a job, you can literally, um, I think there's a guy who did something for Flat in the Curve, a designer on Twitter, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And, that literally got him 
job opportunities, client leads, yeah. and without having a client, he just created something that he thought was brilliant and put it out there, and yeah. that was his strategy. Just use uh, human interest and the, the natural uh, Twitter wave, mm -hmm. and it worked for him. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, have conversations, ask people who may know these things, and you'd be surprised just stopping and saying, look, here's my strategy, here are the opportunities, you'll get much further. Right. Love it. Right. I, I want to wrap up this conversation. Of course, there's so much to talk about. Uh, go to Facebook uh, for Film Hackers, Incredible Media, Net Studios, Garage, and, and add your voice to this. But I want to um, wrap this up with uh, platforms. Someone is watching and they're saying, yeah, I'm going to create my show. And then they put the vlog on Twitter. <laughs> And then the guy has 10 views. Because yeah? you Twitter people, you are, you are posers, you Twitter people. But there's growth. <laughs> Which, <laughs> no, but Brian, no, we, I know, I, we can I've disagree. I've seen some really good content on yes, Twitter. Exactly. And job, including my no, own. No, no what, I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, she said consistency. Uh -huh. You know, you can start creating content today, okay? And you consistently post it on Twitter for the next six months to one year, you'll have a following. Yes. Because you have formed a patch in people's lives and they will take you for that. That they'll know that Danze does his content, long form, he's on Twitter. We shall we shall meet him. We shall there. meet him there. Mm -hmm. Now the problem comes when you create content and you want eyeballs like you've been doing it for ten years. No. It won't. It's not magic. It must, it doesn't happen like right. that. Right. Yes. So I'm, I still think it doesn't matter where you put your content. Can you be consistent? Mm -hmm. We shall find you there. Mm. Why does a maker's videos perform well on Twitter? I disagree, though. You can be consistent at insanity. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, but... And it's it, not about eyeballs. Even if you have, you know, I feel like there's... You can, you can kind of, you know, work with the tide that flows in, in, in the right direction. Of course. You know? like, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, mm. but... Sorry to cut you short, Brian, but... Uh, the thing is, um, there's democracy online. Mm. Okay? Kinda. 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 Yeah. yeah. What you have to do is work with the tide, but please be consistent. Stay the course. Mm. Okay? Mm. Doesn't matter where you are, stay the course. I, all I have to know is when I go there, I'll find you there. Mm -hmm. Rather than being everywhere and anywhere and. You know? I think in one of those YouTube uh, masterclasses, um, the instructor said that actually YouTube is thinking of a tool that can source inconsistent creators. Mm -hmm. So if you post on Monday, YouTube will register that pattern. And the day you post on Thursday, mm -hmm they will shut you down. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Do they know my, the, the, the weight of my wallet? <laughs> like, yes, uh, because they want to build the culture of consistency. Yeah, if you're dropping on Monday, let's drop on Monday. That way, or they will fail to monetize your content because it's dropping um, inconsistently. Paul, let's wrap this up with uh, recommendation to someone yeah. watching. So, uh, like that's uh, before I go on to the platforms, uh, like I've said, the colleagues have said, um, Twitter, I think, has this. Of, of recent, I've realized there's this kind of wave that people start a, a Twitter handle as. Um, as catfish or something like that. And then they attract a few boys around, boys who make a lot of noise, and then probably garner some following. I think they're more into followers, making more followers than actually looking at business and making some money out of that. So these are the people uh, of recent who have started now selling YouTube, uh, sorry, Twitter handles to MPs, the new people who are joining the digital you know, world. So, but I think I believe in um, building a community that is genuine. Because if I'm selling to you a product, I don't mind whether we've met or we know each other, but there's this niche between us. We've created rapport that, yo, Brian is somewhere and he follows me, I follow, him, I, I follow them back. So the moment I release um, particular content, maybe I'm marketing up a certain product, this person will behave like my own family member and they'll like whatever I've shared. 
vis-a-vis -vis these people who are into follow trains or probably trying to generate a huge following of 100k to be tolebs like they call themselves and then at the end of the day you give them um we call them gigs you give them a gig to probably talk about uh, menstrual hygiene and then somebody will do a tweet and never receive a single retweet mm -hmm. you'll be like what with your 50k, I, I with your 60k followers, not big not big. a single person could even feel a pity, a small, you know, <laughs> pinch of pity for you. You get because literally Twitter is more of you're talking to yourself and expect somebody to join the conversation. Yeah. So that conversation should be really good, but at, on the other end of it, the person following you should also have pay that rent of you know have to retweet. That is the only rent I get from you. Mm -hmm. So why are you following me anyway? Are you a uh, something like uh, you you know so i believe in creating a a community that believes because when you are marketing or probably when you are marketing a product your your first your first your first focus should be on believability that is when the client will see that there are returns on the investment because they pay you so if there is no believability nobody is retreating nobody is even commenting on the product nobody has even consumed that product it, the influence is going the other way around. So I would recommend that if there's a particular content, let's say Twitter, because that is where my, you know, my main focus is. I believe that creating a community that believes in you as a brand is very paramount yeah. than creating a huge following that doesn't, you know, pay back. So commit, creating a community that is believing in whatever you're doing, you know, marketing or probably selling to them, than Twitter, because there are more calls to action on Twitter than Facebook. You'll have a thousand people liking the product on the Facebook post, but only two will, will buy it. Mm -hmm. I do Chikubo online, and we are doing very good right. because of Twitter. And of course, you supplement with other Social media. Other media, social media, because they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So when I have a product and I want quick money, I will take it to Twitter. Yeah. Okay. But... And, and, and maybe you can help, help also answer this question. Eddie is asking, how do you segment an audience considering um, the audience on Facebook may not necessarily be the focal point of your, mm -hmm. uh, of your content? or you know, if it's IG or mm. Twitter. And, and, and you can also feed into this question because that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. What content is good for particular platforms? You know, I, I always ask, um, if you are a chef, what's the best uh, platform to use? If you are in sport, where uh, do you just, go? Just if you're in you fashion, think. which platforms can you uh, Go to that will you know work well because I've I've seen I've I've seen people do, posting photos mm. on on Twitter and they don't get anything mm. yeah, yeah? <laughs> and then you check out their Instagram pages and it's, it's much like mm. they have so many likes so it still is an example yeah 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 so so uh, if uh, if we can fit into that conversation mm. I think to me um. That there's the, that, that particular types of content that fits in particular platforms, but let's talk about Facebook. Facebook, I believe in uh, user-generated content. Probably you have this campaign, and probably you're going to award some people some things. You expect those people to sit down and generate that content mm -hmm. the way they understand the campaign. Then you explain to them the jargon on Facebook because now Facebook has this type of audience that is um, in Katanga, people who are half land, or probably not land, <laughs> half baked. <laughs> yeah, people who just have, who just gotten um, a phone and they, they have that free MTN MBs of monthly 20 MBs or something. So the only time they have is, okay, rather the, the only things they can do online is probably check through the nice photos of ladies, yeah. the Facebook pages of these ones. <laughs> Become of these ones who are selling themselves, you know, even even now, speak uh, people have now joined that online, so that they're, they're selling their products yeah, on. COVID, COVID, so, yeah, COVID, COVID, <laughs> COVID, <laughs> COVID has not left us in, a, in the, the same way. So, I believe somebody before they and that they should create their own content. Mm -hmm. User generated, I mean, the, the other end, you tell them. 
I, I'm giving you this, probably there is an offer and then discounted, but oh, it is a campaign for a month, like we were running the Skyview, you generate your own content. Ask people to like your own content. That is, me as a brand, I'm getting traction. Before I pay you for that traction, I must see that you are, you've earned it. Mm -hmm. So user-generated content is very suitable for the Facebook, as I think. Mm -hmm. Then Twitter, this is corporate somehow, though that it is being invaded of recent with young kids who are like, <laughs> like Danza recently said, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Danza has just talked about uh, the, the <laughs> no. Danza, <laughs> what did they no, do? He said that us parents are not maybe parenting these kids well. Mm. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, we've seen those influx, but I think Twitter is more of a corporate, so people um, easily, you know, converted. Mm -hmm. There's a higher conversion rate. If you have content. great conversation, if you have great conversation, Twitter is the place for And you. good content. Right. Not banters and, you know, <laughs> having trolls. Yeah. Yes, those ones have traction, but not payable. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have a troll, uh, you have um, a comic on Twitter, or probably you're trolling somebody with a bad image. And then you'll have all those thousands of retweets, but no one has paid you at the end of the day. I will have two retweets on my Minister Hygiene tweet, or probably Skyview, and I'm signing some cash off that. That's right. So that's, I would just encourage people to channel themselves into that. That's good. But I think you, just to add on that, you need to be a great conversationalist. Yeah. Across the board. Yeah. Like really we need well. to, to know how to to initiate conversation and also hold them. I mean, look at, you guys are working offices, like look at all the employees or your colleagues. Who, who are the poor who are good conversationalists? You know, those are people who you need to talk to, even when you, you guys are watching out there, in your, in your companies, in your businesses, look out for content creators who are good with conversation. I think this is a very good, um, uh, quality to have, yeah, you need to be able to initiate and sustain conversations. And quality of conversation also matters. Mm. That's the most important thing, I think, the quality. Yeah. Quality of conversation yes. also matters. I mean, you can, for awareness speed, you're mm. not calling anyone to, to, to click on, on nothing, you know, or there's no CTA when you're doing awareness. Mm. Maybe when you want to collect data, but trolling, trolling will get you awareness. True. You know, mm -hmm. you're not asking anyone to buy anything, just awareness. But also how you troll matters. Matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. conversations, sustained conversations, <coughs> that are quality also works. Right. Yeah. Can I ask uh, Tracy, question? Yeah. Yes. So once, once, because I, I, you know, I, I see different rate cards and everything. So once you build your brand, how do you suggest selling or monetizing your brand? How do you, how do you price it? I like to believe good wine needs no brew, you understand? If someone likes what they see, then they usually just come and approach you, yeah? If I'm um, putting good content out there, and if my numbers are active, we forgot to talk about the numbers, I could have 18,000 followers. If none of those followers are actually participating in anything I'm doing, then that goes to show because some people have actually just bought these followers. People buy likes now, people buy followers. So what I do, the beauty with Instagram is you can actually go back and check your followers and you will see what accounts you list interact with and you're allowed to unfollow these people. I mean, whatever you like to do. But um, for other people, you can look for the opportunities. If there's an opportunity, I know people um, go out there, especially on Twitter, they see campaigns that are running. You, if you have the right people that you're connected with, you know who to speak to, maybe I can speak to him and say, oh, do you have anything coming on board? You know, I'd like to be one of your influencers. And then someone could have a thousand followers that are very active. You could have 25,000 followers that are not active. So even that person with that small community is going to change a lot with how you push forward marketing your brand. But I'm still stuck with um, this bunch of followers that are not doing anything for me. And then if you're putting the right content with the right visuals, uh, with, uh, if you're a good conversa conversationalist, then people are going to approach you and say, I want her to represent me. 
Mm. And then, like he was talking about the trolls. There's a way to troll, and I'm, I'm not here for trolls. I'm not. <laughs> one, one word, and I block you. I don't have time to engage these people anymore. My God. It's just a block button, guys. It's, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. Just block and move on. No one has time to keep engaging trolls. You see, the problem is when you give these people attention, what I realize is I'm actually attracting people back to your account. You understand? Oh, I want to see how far this person will push Tracy. Ain't nobody got time for that, you know? Hey, so. Amma, for me, if you come for me, I'll come for you. <laughs> now, okay, parting shots. John, let's start with you. Yeah, I fight. I wouldn't uh, forgive myself if I left here today without uh, uh, disagreeing with, with Mr. Hashtags. <laughs> I, I can understand his bias towards Twitter because he spends a lot of time there. Naturally, he's in love with Twitter. <laughs> but again, also, I think we, we, we need to uh, use some numbers uh, uh, to, to kind of make a case on where someone takes their content. Mm. First of all, the content format sometimes will dictate. If you do not have motion stuff, you will, you know, don't have a lot of wiggle room on YouTube unless you're going to do slideshows and 2D, 3D graphics and all. But again, speaking to the numbers, I, I, I run uh, these numbers a lot because eh? mm -hmm. I keep getting the question, where do I start if yes. I'm starting out? Let's have the numbers. Facebook, in Uganda, these numbers are in Uganda. Mm. We have between 2 million to 2.5 million people active every single month. 40% mm. are female, 60% are male. A male. Twitter, we have 176,500 active on a monthly basis. Active. Active. The keyword being active, yeah. not accounts created. Yeah. Instagram, we have 360,000 active in Uganda as of last month, a month, uh, sorry, in, in a month. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn, we have, this is not monthly active, 720,000 accounts created. Uh, on, on, on WhatsApp, we have over 2 million users. What do the numbers tell us? Ugandans are more on Facebook than they are on any other platform, mm. point one, point two. Facebook, from a small business point of view where most of us fall, unless we're working for our eight to fives, has converted more customers for small businesses than any other platform. Yeah. Point number two. Point number three, advertising costs. It, it costs you around $0.02 to reach uh, 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 to, for someone to view your video mm -hmm. as opposed to about 0 0.04 or 0 0.05 for someone to do your video on, on Twitter. YouTube kind of matches Facebook. So I would like to dispel this notion that Facebook is a Katanga platform. <laughs> uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, a person needs to ask them, and this is where we, we, we go wrong. You start off with the platform not your personas, like profile who your typical follower, pick, yeah. a typical audience is. Now, you're not supposed to take them where you want them. You're supposed to go where they are. Mm -hmm. So after finding out who your audience is, the next question should be, because these platforms tell us how old these people are, what they're interested in, their location, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not true, uh, and, and I use data to add to my case, not emotion, that Facebook uh, is, is limited to low quality, does not convert. It actually does more conversion. It has higher quality people, because you see, uh, and this is a personal bias, I don't have data for it. Most people on Twitter have demand, but there is a difference between effective demand and demand. Mm -hmm. Demand is you want something, effective, effective demand is you want something and you have the money to pay for it. So if we weigh these two platforms, if set you know, against each other, you're actually going to convert more on Facebook based on solid data that I have in Uganda than you will on Twitter. So as a parting shot, I think I would encourage everyone to start by profiling who their audience is. Go where your audience is. Don't try to create uh, a space where it does not exist. Reason being that you're going to invest a lot I in growing and, and pulling in people to like what you do as opposed to letting them uh, focus on the content that you're publishing. Let's get you an account in just <laughs> Katanga. Let's take him to Katanga. Okay, uh, that's it. Parting shot. That's very, that's very good information, John. <laughs> because as content creators, you also know that span. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I agree with uh, John. I also agree with, uh, with Paul. But let me speak to the money, because um, mm -hmm. you're not going to buy, I have an expensive phone. And I chose to get this phone. I had a GS8 from like 2017 till today. <laughs> right. I was like, nah, it can work, it can work. HS8. And then I realized, when I started streaming events, eh? um, I'm like, your customer is going to pay you X amount of money, millions. They don't deserve the certain quality you're going to give them. Yet, eh? So I began to invest in myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't invest in myself because I had to make the crazy cash there on the get, from the get-go but so that I could make that money back to for what I paid for. So I have a, I have a kick ass YouTube um, studio right now. It's amazing, mm. but it's because I've earned it. You get mm. it? I don't have the, so many subscribers on YouTube, but I found out that that, that scientific wedding video worked so much for me as opposed to the other things I'm more passionate about vlogging. You get it? So what does that mean? Um, yes, mobile phones are great. The best tech is also very great, but ensure that you invest in yourself because if you don't, you're not going to have the drive to rip small businesses. If you're going to be doing a, what Josh is telling you for video in business, yes, do the videos because they're the things that work now, but make sure at the end of the day, if I'm another SME and I have the gear she has, I'm going to beat you at what you're doing. Mm. So competitor analysis is important, but most importantly, invest in yourself because it works. You will reap yeah. these benefits. Yeah. It works. Take your time, consistency, believe in yourself. And um, like the Facebook, Twitter thing, I have a bigger Facebook page compared to my Twitter account. I have more engagement on my Twitter vis-a-vis -vis my Facebook. But I know for a fact when I'm selling a product, guys in my inbox are asking for more advice on Facebook vis-a-vis -vis Twitter, you get it? So these dynamics are very important. So go on a platform, invest in it, you're going to reap, just take your time with it. Right, yeah. Tracy. Just before we wrap up, don't be, <clears throat> don't be afraid to sell your other platforms in your profile. I don't see a lot of people do that, but um, make sure your, hash, uh, your names are the same on every platform. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to be called so many things, guys. <laughs> I have so many names. On Facebook, I was wild girl. I was allergic to something. You have to change. <laughs> <clears throat> you have to change these things because you're branding yourself. Yeah. Coca-Cola does not call itself Coca-Cola on Twitter. Then go on Facebook and call themselves Cola Coke. Slay Coke. No, you know, something <laughs> like that. You understand? Slay it's it's the simple things like that. So um, make sure you have a name that flows through all your platforms. But then again, co-sell your platforms. Right. Because someone might go to my Instagram, but they want to know, okay, what's she like on yeah. Facebook or, in, or on Twitter? or whatever it is that you want, and you asked about a chef, where would you put your content? That's very important. Josh says you can put it anywhere. I agree. Don't be afraid to sell yourself, you know? I mean, so that person might be on Twitter, but I think where your main focus might be, maybe you might say on Twitter, I will use it for customer feedback. And then on um, Instagram, I will put my videos on IGTV. And then on Facebook, there is a new um, slot as well for videos. People are putting short films there. People are putting different stuff there. So feel free to share your visuals. Make sure they're good. But nonetheless, start where you are. We can't wait for the good things until we can start. Just start where you are and then move. Right. Yeah. Mr. Hashtags. Well, my parting shot would be... Um, I would encourage people to, to join these platforms, but let them find a niche. Let them have a niche. Let me follow you or let me follow your brand because of A, B, C, and D. And let me, let me be your client on merit, not just because I've been dragged like a horse to the, to the pool. So I believe that these things is I mean, digital is where we're heading to, is where we are right now. And each single day we realize that, you know, people are embracing it. Even the government comes out and though they bring the OTT bit of it, still you find out that even the government is interested and I, you can hear MPs every day, you know, trying to adopt it. So I believe that to have, um, to market a brand online, using online media, you'd probably consider a couple of things. 
say, creating an audience, looking at providing value for those people who are following, who are believing in your brand, because that is because of believability is when your returns, you realize the returns on the investment. So I would advise that brands out there um, embrace the research before you know, joining the platforms and putting certain content out there. They should understand their audience and also provide value. Give, give back value to them. And I, I don't know why uh, Danza didn't talk about the, <clears throat> the promoting bit for content. I think it snapped. But also you find that a brand has almost every post of them of theirs being promoted and it's in everyone's face like we're wondering you just promoted this yesterday again today and then tomorrow so it becomes monotonous so i think brands should also look into the you know, well we want to also give back to the third party agencies the facebooks and the youtubes but i think overshowing it to the faces of people makes you desperate as a brand i think the promotion bit of it should also be mild. Do the uh, six, organic. seven, one in seven posts at least. Okay. Should be organic, literally. Mm -hmm. So people can believe in your content and probably your product. Mm -hmm. That would be my right. parting shot. Um, so, so I think, you know, in Africa, we like land. Eh? You want to buy 0.8 of a decimal and build dream home. <laughs> So I'll use that as an analogy, basically. I feel like the internet for brands, whether individual or for businesses, is it's free real estate, mm -hmm. literally that. So, you know, before you're gonna build your dream house, number one, survey, you know? Survey, have that vision, have that blueprint or the strategy we're talking about. The next thing is invest, you know? Mm -hmm. Whether you need the equipment, whether you need to pay for um, a Canva subscription, whether you need to buy, pay for a free website to host your portfolio. Yeah whatever it is, invest. And then the next thing is you build your house quality. You know, you're not gonna build a shoddy house. Mm -hmm. You're gonna give it quality control. You're gonna have an eye. You're gonna, you know, grammar, mm -hmm. these small things. You're not gonna, you're not gonna cheapen um, your brand by, um, you know, simple housekeeping mm -hmm. online. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, you know, monetize it. I mean, like if you, have, if you invest in good real estate, ideally you want to monetize it. Yeah. And that's the goal. So don't be afraid to put it out in the market, monetize it, and you keep on repairing, you know? You keep on feeding back. And I think the interesting thing about the digital space and online branding is it keeps on changing. And I've learned so much from this conversation alone. And you know, I think the half-life of uh, whether it's platforms, whether it's the changes within the platforms, um, and even just the dynamics of the communities, you know, everyone just TikTok, 100%, you know? Um, who has their pulse, who has their finger on the pulse fully on TikTok? You know, and there's gonna be something else in the next, uh, you know, who knows, two months. Yeah. yeah. So I say, invest in this free real estate. It'll be worth your while, and enjoy the journey. John, how many TikTok users do you have? I haven't got. They don't share their numbers. <laughs> hey. Yet. Actually, what Yet. I what I do to find out that is most times I go on who locally is the biggest there, mm. and then I figure out what their numbers are. And then most times I find out, who, is it male or female? And then yeah. eventually, somehow you can get it. It's rudimentary, because right. now for TikTok, I just went to Linda Danny's account. Yes. Get it? And I just figured, but what he has just said is important. Even you as an advertiser, as an agency man, as the big influencer, you have a cup. Mm. There's a younger person out there. Mm. Snapchat, TikTok, me. <laughs> over my head. But <laughs> if I have a very good community up. manager who is, who is younger than me and who is into this stuff, that is the right person to handle that brand for you. Right. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. Uh, my parting shot is, is, a, is very simple. Um, as a business, I think where to start from is a strategy. Like, have an idea of what you're going to tell people, how to tell it to them, and what production value to attach to that. Mm. And then have a budget. Be decent enough put a budget to it. Videos or whatever uh, content you want to produce has a value ranging from zero mm -hmm. to wherever you want to go. Yeah. So have a decent budget that pays all the people for you to actualize your strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when you're in there, I think it's very important you market through story. 
Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, work on your pages. Let your page one be as punchy, you know, so you can hold uh, audiences yeah. for some time. Yeah. So hold that conversation mm -hmm. also for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you can't, uh, talk to me, videoinbusiness.com. That is V-I-D-I-Y-O in business. Professional church. Dot com. Very good. Exactly. <laughs> um, the last thing is um, you can become any of these people here. Just take an online, uh, an online course. It's Digital Skills for Africa. It depends on how fast you study, but please take your time. Google Digital Skills for Africa is changing lives for you to learn how to do these things. Like I said, you don't need 10,000 followers. You can start with 500, 1,000, whatever it is. Just educate yourself. The, the sources are there. Educate yourself, learn, relearn. Some of you have to unlearn mm -hmm. what you've <laughs> been having all this time. Yes, or evolve, yeah, with the times. As a TV guy, I'll tell you that uh, one of the rules they tell us, don't over talk because your, the maximum attention your viewer will give you is eight minutes. That's why uh, for you know, world-class TV stations and, and where even some of us are working to, every eight minutes people go, go for short breaks to allow the viewer to you know, go somewhere. So if you're, that's, that's, unfortunately, that's the, the audience that is consuming your content. So regardless of the genre that you're thinking of creating, learn these things. Maybe your content doesn't need to have 50 minutes. Maybe it needs to be five minutes. Uh, all this information is online. All this information, we're going to be giving it to you uh, every Friday. So just go down to the chat uh, section and type your question. We'll get these guys to uh, answer those questions for you. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, remember to stay safe. Please wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, and uh, avoid crowds if you have to. Stay safe. Bye-bye.